A few months ago, I posted something on Facebook about one of my pet peeves, which is the way our industry handles pricing. Sort of these random numbers that seem to be goals for people, instead of actually diving into what it really costs to run a business, and the response was overwhelming, and so that's what we're gonna do today. So in case you're watching this and you're wondering who I am, my name's Tony Hoffer, my wife Amy and I run Hoffer Photography, and we've been supporting ourselves for almost 12 years through just photography went into this business with almost no knowledge of pricing or business and have figured it out over the years. And so I want to start that discussion today. We realized that this was a really overwhelming topic and so much so that we decided to break it down into three different parts. So today we're going to talk about common mistakes that people make when pricing themselves. In the next video, we're going to give a few suggestions about what you can do to get your pricing in order now. And lastly, we created this thing that we're going to unveil in the next video, which we think will help people practically get like a hands-on real number in mind for what they should be charging for the jobs that they do. So let's dive in and talk about the three mistakes that people commonly make when pricing themselves. The first mistake I see all the time is people pricing themselves based on what they think customers want to pay. Now, this is a totally backwards notion for almost any business. As a business, we need to first understand what it costs to actually run our business. That's when we set a number for what we can sustain over time, and that's our minimum charge. People often say, well, there's a supply and demand thing, right? So if I have so much supply and not that much demand, I should decrease prices. That's true after a point, but for any business, we need to know what our baseline, bottom line numbers are before we even start charging. Supply and demand comes after that once we know that we're charging a rate that can be sustainable long term. So let's not mistake supply and demand as the be all end all of how we price ourselves, but that should never take the place of a sustainable price to start. In our industry, we see a lot of people say, well, I'm finding that customers only want to pay this. And my answer is customers in any industry want to pay as close to zero as possible. This is particularly a problem in creative fields and in service industries because we tend to see the value in what we do as only the product we create rather than our time or our overhead or things that we're going to talk about in a second. The second mistake we see a lot is people pricing themselves based on experience. So a lot of us, especially as creative people or as people who are making a physical product, think, I haven't made this before, so I can't charge much money for it. I see this all the time with photographers. The example I always give here is of a restaurant. When a restaurant opens, they can't charge 50 cents for a burger just because they've never made one before, because there are very real costs that go into making that burger. Not only the cost of the food, but the cost of the labor in the restaurant or the rent or all that other stuff that goes into putting a burger on a plate. So we need to realize that as creators, we can't price ourselves based only on experience. Again, yes, we understand that as inexperienced people, we might need to charge a little less to build the demand, but the principles never change. In order to run a business sustainably, we need to reach our minimum amounts, regardless of how much experience we have. And so as creative people, that's really challenging to say, I've never created this before, but you need to pay a premium for it. And so if you're out there and you're saying, I've never done this before, I understand what you're saying, but I simply can't charge what a professional charges yet. My suggestion is at the very least, have a starting price, which is like an intro price or something like that as you get on your feet, but put a very firm deadline on when that ends. Because if you don't, you're gonna be following what clients want you to charge for your entire career, and it might never get you to a path of sustainability. The third thing we see a lot is people pricing based on the job itself. I know that sounds weird, stick with me for a second. It really comes down to two things, overhead hours and overhead cost. Let's just pretend for a second that I have an apple tree at my house that grows 100 apples and someone comes by and says, can I buy an apple? And I say, sure, give me a dollar, I'll give you an apple, the end. Over the course of the next couple of days, 100 people come by, I sell 100 apples and I have $100. Now picture for a second, that I get an idea that I want to plant more apple trees and the next year I have a thousand of them that all produce a hundred apples. So instead of a hundred, I now have a hundred thousand apples. Well, that complicates things because I can't sell a hundred thousand apples by myself. 
I might need to hire people to help me sell my apples. I might need to build a stand by the side of the road. And so that stuff is overhead cost. It's not related to the apple itself. It's related to all the things that go into selling these apples. And that's typical as businesses grow because we're spending more time and more money on overhead and less time just simply performing a service and selling it for a price. So as creative people, as service providers, we need to figure that out because if we're pricing based only on the job itself, we realize we need to do 50 jobs a year. There's going to be some overhead included in that. And so we need to start calculating that in our price, not only the time that the overhead takes, advertising our business, doing social media, doing our taxes, but also the money it costs, the money to buy gear or to buy insurance, even just to pay the accountant that's doing the taxes, you know? So there's, there's lots of overhead that gets incorporated that we need to start incorporating into our pricing. Now it's the part where you're probably saying, I understand overhead. How do I actually apply that and see what it is and how that should affect my pricing? And so in the next video, we're going to jump into that. And I'm just going to tease you and say that friends of mine, uh, Mike and Carrie Morby reached out and said, Hey, we have this really cool thing so that people can plug in their own numbers and actually get a readout of what they're making per hour, what they're profiting per job and how to incorporate all these numbers into it. So make sure to check out the next video. We're going to give some suggestions on how to price yourself. And we're going to tell you all about this little tool that we have, which we think will help get your numbers set and get you on the path to being sustainable long term. So if you're interested in the next video or any of the others we make, feel free to subscribe uh, to the channel here. You can follow all of our work at hofferphotography.com slash blog is for the recent stuff. And we're on social media at Hoffer Photography. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon for part two of pricing.